So in our previous videos, we looked at the trait theory of leadership and the behavioral theory of leadership. What we're seeing dominate these days in terms of leadership theory is the contingency theory of leadership. And that is different situations require different styles of leadership. So the predominant view is that leaders can be trained, so less trait, more behavioral, but that the behavioral aspects may not be the same in every situation. So there are three contingency theories we're going to look at, the Fiedler uh, contingency model, the situational leadership model, and the path goal theory. So let's start with the Fiedler uh, contingency model. So Fiedler's approach to contingency leadership says effective group performance depends on a proper match between a leader's style and the degree to which the situation allows the leader to control and influence it. So we need to define the leadership styles and the different types of situations and then identify the appropriate combinations. So what Fiedler did is created what's called the least preferred coworker questionnaire. And so if you're working along with us in this course, uh, we're actually going to complete this questionnaire as part of our participation marks. And so we want to figure out, are you more task oriented or relationship oriented leader? So how do we do that with the least preferred coworker scale? So what you do is you think about the worst person you've ever worked with. OK, so think about a person that you've been in a project with, a peer, a boss, a subordinate, just a person that was just terrible to work with. Then you want to answer on the scale different questions about them. So if you have this person pictured in your mind, were they more pleasant or unpleasant, friendly or unfriendly, rejecting or accepting, tense or relaxed, and so on. The idea here is to figure out whether or not you focus more on the person in terms of their performance or the person in terms of their uh, personality and relationship to you. So. The way that this works then is once you've answered all these questions, then you total up your score. Okay. And so different sources use different cutoff numbers, but we'll use the ones here from the Robbins textbook. And the Robbins textbook says if, the, if your least preferred coworker is seen relatively positively, so your score is more than 64, then you as a leader are more relationship oriented. So your focus really more on, on personality and relationship. If the least preferred coworker is relatively unfavorable, so your score is below 57, then you are a more task oriented leader. That is, you focus more on their ability to perform and do their job than on the, their personality. So what do we do with this information once we figure out if we are a more uh, task oriented or relationship oriented individual? Well, according to, to Fiedler's approach, we can look at different situations based on the leader member relationship. So do we have confidence, trust and respect between the employee and the leader? We can look at the task structure. So how much formalization do we have? And we can look at it in terms of is the task itself structured? So, you know, the process, you know what to do. Is the job more generally formalized? There's lots of rules and procedures. So what level of formalization and structure do we have? And then we can look at position power. So the degree of influence a leader has over the activities related to hiring, discipline, firing, promotion, salary. So what role does a leader have in terms of motivating and managing uh, uh, the individual? So what Feeler suggests is that if you have a good relationship between the employee and the leader, so there's confidence and trust between the subordinate and the person of authority, and there is task structure, so it's clear what to do, there's clear roles and procedures. In that case, a task-oriented leader is effective. Okay. The focus is on the goal, there's trust in the leader, and we know what needs to be done to reach that goal. Then we have an effective leadership. On the other extreme, if there is a poor relationship between the leader and the subordinate, so you don't trust the leader, maybe you think 
Uh, the leader of your company is an idiot, doesn't know what they're doing. They were hired as a favor and they're not qualified for their job. So no trust, no confidence, no respect. And at the same time, the job itself is not formalized or structured. So it's very open-ended. You as the employee have to figure out what to do and how to do it. If that is the case, then the better leader is a task-oriented leader Someone who says, here's the goal that we're trying to achieve rather than being a relationship oriented leader. But if you don't have those two combinations, so you don't have both poor and low leader member relationship and task structure or both high leader member relationship and high structure, then the relationship oriented uh, is a more appropriate, more effective leadership a role. So it really comes down to if there's no trust and it's unclear what to do, then it's better to have someone who is more task oriented than relationship oriented because you don't have the relationship there. And it really, you then need to be united based on, on, on the goal. If you have a good relationship and there's a lot of structure, then you can also be focused on task because you don't need that relationship building. You already have it. Any other situation, the relationship oriented leadership uh, is effective. So when you have quite a mix in terms of relationship and task structure, then we need that relationship oriented. Someone who is who is going to focus on that emotional intelligence and that bring cohesiveness and bringing um, the subordinates uh, together for that common cause, right? So the leader is about a vision and the strategy to get there.